Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the Tri-Star River, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Keep Hi-Fi for providing the Tri-Star River for a review. Do greatly appreciate it. Keep Hi-Fi, you rock. So the Tri-Star River, this will set you back $60 from your bank account, and it comes in several options. You can get it in blue or green and also with a 3.5 or 4.4 termination. Today we have the green 4.4 option. So the TriStar River, this is a dual dynamic configuration. It has a 10 millimeter beryllium plated and a six millimeter titanium driver. Impedance is 32 ohms. Sensitivity is 110 decibels, and it has a frequency response range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And it also includes tuning filters. The TriStar River, it comes in this very small box. Get some pictures, a little bit of branding, some information on the sides and on the back. Nothing special. On the inside, you get a carrying case without all the accessories inside it. So the carrying case is nice. You got this gray color, a little bit of branding, and uh, very well built, nice and small. This definitely is pocketable, and it's going to protect your IEMs. Opening it up, you have plenty of room for your accessories and for your IEMs to sit. You get two different sets of tips. You get these grayish color narrow bore tips, and then you get tri clearing tips. I used to try clarion tip. So I found that the gray black narrow bore tips really increased the base, even though it wasn't the, the best reproduced base, it definitely enhanced it. And then it compressed the sound stage and it kind of turned them into V-shaped, upper mids and lower treble became very, very pronounced. And then the clarion tip is a wide bore tip and I found that it kind of evened out things. The, the base was not near as elevated and it was a little better reproduced. And that rise in the mids and, and in the lower treble was dipped a little bit and a little bit better controlled. And it also opened up the sound stage just a little bit. But it also did introduce a little bit of harshness in the treble region. So I went with the clarion tip. Also, you get a little tool to change your tuning switches. You get a pink cloth. And of course, you get your cable and the Star River. I don't mind the cable. It does feel a little cheap, but for a $60 price point, it's not bad. It's a little bit on the thin side. The ear hooks are a little bit on the flimsy side. I wish I had just a little bit more tension. The split is okay. It is like this aluminum feeling. Uh, the cinch doesn't really stay in place very well. It stays thin. Terminates to that 4.4. The termination is a little bit chunky. Uh, this is a OFC copper plated silver cable. Connects with two pin. I like the look of the Star River. Got this greenish on black shell. They're a little bit on the fat side, not too bad. They're not that heavy. And they have a decent length for a nozzle and a good angle. It is a flat back, there's no uh, wing at all. I find that even with their size, they are just about, you know, to the, to the too big size for me. But they do fit, and I don't have any issues with comfort. Uh, they sit in my ears for 90 minutes or so with no discomfort whatsoever. And uh, take a little break, put them back in, resume another 90 minutes, have no issues there. Isolation of outside noises, not the greatest. It's probably 50, 60%, somewhere in that range. And uh, you can hear things around you. Um, it's just a little bit muffled. So they're not the greatest. Noisier environments, they definitely will struggle. Around the house, around the neighborhood. 
light office duty, that type of stuff, they'll be adequate. The drivability of them, they're not very hard to drive. Uh, dongles push them very easy. And then uh, DAPs and desktop also were very efficient at pushing the Star River. I did find that they're a little bit fussy when it comes to the sound. If it's a little bit on the warmer side of a source, it kind of bogs down the Star River. Uh, so you, something that has a little bit brighter of a, of a signature um, also was a little bit of a problem as it kind of was a little bit too aggressive. So you're going to need to look for something that's pretty well balanced. Uh, some of the sources that I did enjoy it on Hibby FC4 Tantrum Space, and I liked it on the Hibby R5 Gen 2, and also uh, on desktop, I did not mind it on the AUN X1S uh, GT, and Odyssey Deckard was too much power. The MyTech Liberty DAC 2 going into the HPA was very uh, harsh in the trouble with it. Um, and it just didn't sound good. But going into the uh, THX1 linear, it was okay. So it is a little bit on the picky side with sources, as I mentioned. Before we get into the sonic impressions of the TriStar River, I want to thank my supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for all that you provide to the channel. It is much appreciated. I know that in these days and, and times, it's it's a struggle financially in the economic uh, side of things. So uh, anything that you can give to the channel to support it and give back to the channel um, and help it to continue is much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do uh, make note that everything that is given to the channel goes back into the channel, helps to produce it with microphones and uh, microphone stands, camera stands, lighting, all that kind of stuff. Also, it helps to purchase gear to review and to compare with, and also uh, beverages of choice like coffee, tea, or uh, other drinks um, that uh, I can consume while doing the reviews. So if you're interested, check out the links down below. There's all kinds of ways that, that you can do it through PayPal and Venmo, one-time gifts, or if you want to do a monthly, uh, you can check out Patreon and YouTube memberships. While you're down there, don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. Also hit that subscription button if you haven't already and check off that notification bell. That way you'll know when the next Honest Audiophile video is uploaded. Okay, so the Star River from Try. How do they sound? Well, first we gotta discuss the tuning switches. So there are four possibilities of tunings, but I actually found that it's really more comes down to two tunings. The switches don't really make much of an effect uh, in certain things. So there's a bass, balanced, vocal, and pop. I found that bass and balanced sounded identical. And I found that pop and vocal sounded identical. So that's two tuning switches uh, instead of four. But here's the thing. I preferred the bass balanced option. And... Putting it into pop vocal, it immediately was ear bleeding painful. It was just way too much mids and way too much treble. And it was just ear piercing. It was just, it hurt. I could not listen to it for more than like one song. I'm balanced. They're tolerable. So all sonic impressions will be done with the balanced tuning switches and the clarion tip. So the base of the TriStar River has a kind of a lackluster approach. It extends into the sub bass and it just lacks body and it lacks impact. And you just don't have a lot of dynamics. There's just not a lot of punch and slam. Every now and then it'll come out and play, but it just doesn't really drive home to music and it just doesn't have any authority. And it just kind of is just going through the motions and it's, it's just kind of meh. Tonality wise, it, it's all right. And detail retrieval is, is okay. And resolution is okay. It just doesn't really... Mm, grab you and 
and, and put forth the music with authority. The mids. The lower mids are very thin and recessed. Upper mids, very elevated. Even in balance mode, they're overly elevated. Put it in pop and vocal and they become super shouty. The, the mids just, they have a thinness to them and they just have way too much energy and way too much elevation and they just don't sound natural. It just doesn't have enough note weight and body to sound accurate. And, and the mids just are, they're, they're just kind of shouty and in your face and kind of aggressive. And then the treble. The lower treble is very harsh and very aggressive. And then the upper treble is just kind of, I don't know where it's at. It's, it's kind of there, but it kind of lacks the, 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 the air in the, in the, the sparkle and the energy. And it's, it's just kind of like the bass kind of shows up at times and the others you're kind of like, well, where is it? So overall, it's just kind of a mixed bag of, of, of sound and the star river just kind of sounds bland. It doesn't really have any gumption to, to grab me and, 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 and help me to enjoy the music. Soundstage is average width, which is okay. It's, it's not, doesn't sound cramped. It doesn't sound crowded, but it doesn't sound really uh, naturally wide. Uh, there's a little bit of depth there, but not a whole lot. It's not the deepest of stages. You can kind of, kind of read into it, but it's not a very deep stage. And then layering is kind of okay. It does get a little muddled and confused at times, especially on busier tracks. Imaging is, is good. You can kind of place things on the stage and follow them around. It is one thing that it does a little bit better than everything else. And detail retrieval and resolution um, details. This is not a very detailed IEM. The Star River struggles with it. it it's not going to wow you with the presentation that it gives of, of details. And at times you'll be like, mm, I'm kind of missing something. And then the resolution of the details that it brings in is just kind of okay for the price point. It's not anything special. And note weight is thin, as mentioned, and the, the tone and timbre just doesn't sound natural. There's just something off. It just doesn't sound quite correct. It's at, at times, instruments kind of all sound the same. So if you're listening to a brass instruments, everything will kind of sound like you, you'll know it's a brass instrument, but you just won't be able to tell if it's a trumpet, if it's a trombone, French horn, uniphone. You, you just won't be able to tell what it is. Same thing with woodwinds. You won't really be able to tell the differences between clarinets and saxophones and bassoons. And it's just kind of like struggles with tone and timbre. So overall, I just find that the TriStar River is kind of a meh, bleh type of sound. It just doesn't do anything special to set itself apart. And it really doesn't do anything that well. How does it compare to a couple other IEMs in its price point? So another dual dynamic is the Tin Hi-Fi T2. And the Tin Hi-Fi T2 has a more natural and accurate tone and timbre, has better detail retrieval and resolution, has a more uh, balanced and cohesive sound, has better spacing, and overall the, the T2 just sounds more accurate. And even though it doesn't quite have as much bass impact as the uh, Star River, it's more de defined and refined. And then you have the truth ears hexa and the hexa is a better refined and defined than the star river. It has better detail retrieval and resolution sounds more natural and accurate in tone and timbre has a more accurate sound stage has better depth and layering. And even though the hexa also is somewhat lightweight on thin on, on, on note weight, it just sounds more natural and, and, and true. And, I would take the Hexa and the T2 over the Star River. This has been Dave, the Honest Audiophile. Thank you for watching. 
and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links and notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video and check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel, all that kind of stuff is listed down below. And then last but not least, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.